Good morning, everybody. I would like to thank Van Kinter for inviting me to be here today, and it's a pleasure to be in my own country. And uh, you know, a little bit like Cologne, and I was uh, moved to the U.S. in order to invest in in biotech, as the the Spanish government role in in investment uh, years ago. And uh, my name is Manuel Lopez Figueroa. I am the managing director at the venture capital firm called Bay City Capital, based in San Francisco. We have about 1.6 billion under management, and we have done a number of investments, over 100 investments. Of those, um, several are in the CNS space. And uh, Bay City is known for either investing in technologies that are, have an impact on the patients in psychiatry or neurology, among them, you know, Civitas, which is an inhalable form of L-DOPA for Parkinson. But also, we have started companies um, based on what we believe is the innovation in the next 10 years. So one of the companies that I helped put in together was called Brain Cells, which was based in the concept of modulation of neurogenesis for the treatment of psychiatric disorders. The other company that I helped put in together was called Reset Therapeutics, which was based on the concept of the modulation of the circadian rhythms as a way of, sort of treating CNS disorders. Um, I'm proud to say that, you know, we came with these ideas more than 10 years ago. And uh, as you all know, you know, last year, the Nobel Prize in Medicine was uh, for the some of the pioneers in the space. So, you know, what the, me what the goal of uh, Van Kinter and looking forward, I think that, you know, we, we try to accomplish the same, the same goals. We also have invested in the neurotech, in companies that develop uh, medical devices. I'm very proud that, you know, a colleague of mine, uh, La uh, Constantino Lataris, came with the concept of modulation of the spinal cord with particular um, probes to treat the spinal cord uh, injuries or pain. And that was a company that uh, is called Nevro, became a, a billion dollar public company. So these are examples of companies where we look at innovation in the CNS space and uh, we put our money where, you know, where our ideas are. But, uh, I'm also very lucky, um, and as Juan Carlos was uh, telling me yesterday, Juan Carlos Lopez, I'm a sponge. And uh, what I mean for that is like, I like to learn from all of you, and I'm, I'm very glad that this is a, such a multidisciplinary group. And knowing that the brain is such a complex organ and uh, requires of a multidisciplinary approach. So I'm very lucky to be working with uh, one of those groups. It's called the Prisker Neuropsychiatric Disorders Research Consortium, which is a philanthropic effort funded by the Prisca family from Chicago, in which um, they started with an experiment looking at whether investigators can work on these multidisciplines, answering one question. Five years after they created this entity, which are investigators at Stanford, Michigan, Cornell, Irvine, as a way of um, trying to have a better understanding of psychiatric disorders, uh, coming with new biomarkers, novel targets. I'm glad to, to let you know that, you know, over the last 20 years, we have come up with some really exciting new approaches. Um, what well, started to be the application of genetics and other molecular tools, um, and how those, those are, you know, as we know, the prices are going lower, is going to allow for its application in the personalized medicine predisposition and also trying to have a better understanding of the states of the patient. So this group is starting applying genetics uh, into postmortem tissue, looking at 20 to 22 brain regions. You know, we go back to previous calls, talks about the importance of the connectivity and, uh, you know, some terms like circuit neuromics that was uh, quoted by uh, Huda Kiel and how now we are moving from the application of those new targets into the next levels of validation, whether it is in animal models that reflects new or different type of behaviors, not just, you know, the classical animal models of depression or anxiety, and moving into those, um, those understanding of new targets into its application in, the, in humans. By, by that, I mean getting closer to clinical uh, trials. So some of the targets that, um, you know, we have um, discovered is FEF, the fibroblast growth factor. Um, but, you know, in the last year, we have seen a number of um, drugs approved, esketamine, 
which is a rapid acting antidepressant. We have also seen such compound for postpartum depression. I think what we, we're seeing is a, a new approach to a specific symptoms or a specific med medical needs. You know, treatment resistant depression is probably the next one. There is some approaches now in the clinic that may help on it. But what we are trying to look into is those subgroups, psychotic depression. Is, is that a different type of psychotic than the one that you see in Alzheimer's and in Parkinson, where you already have to, you're starting to see drugs in development and drugs approved? Um, so, but, you know, I'm talking about drug development, but as I say, I mean, we have to look into a multidisciplinary approach, and some of the technologies that my group, the Briscoe Consortium, is applying is also um, non-invasive um, medical devices. So, talk about the use of functional MRI to determine which nuclei in the brain you want to uh, intervene, the utilization of, for example, TMS with particular um, algorithms that allows to not treat the patient for a week every day for X number of hours, but to do one single treatment for a couple of hours. Then the also the application of ultrasound as a way of focalizing the ultrasound and targeting vesicles in the brain that allow for the release of those drugs, which potentially can reduce the adverse events in the patient. Those are some of the technologies that uh, my peers, my colleagues at the Briscoe Consortium are applying, and you know, in the next 10 years, you will see having some uh, fruits. But we are in an era of digitalization, and the application of digital health technology is also very important. Starting with the use of CBT um, or the use of other technologies associated with uh, uh, treatment, pharmacological treatment, you have seen companies like Pear Therapeutics, Achille, or Click, where they are trying to combine those. I'm going to leave some of the questions that I have for later discussions, which are questions related to, you know, what is the regulatory pathway, what is going to be the business models for these companies in terms of, you know, is it going to be a, a consumer product, is it going to be a regulated, what are they requiring for regulators, but also, what is the requirement for payers? It's not trivial that, you know, if you do a clinical trial, payers are going to pay for it, especially in countries like the U.S., which is a much more complex uh, environment. So I'm just going to leave you in my last 20 seconds with uh, this idea that from the, my point of view, it's a multidisciplinary approach. Everybody here is contributing elements of it, and uh, it's a very complex disorder or complex organ. Ten years. We will know a little bit more, but ten years from now we have to ask the question, are we there yet? Thank you. Thank you.